basically builds the confidence in your customers and your stakeholders that if something goes wrong, this organization will reliably provide me the service in the agreed amount of time and I can rely on them, I can trust them, I can have confidence in them. From cybersecurity perspective, it goes even one step further. I need to rely and trust on them that they will keep my data confidential. They will keep my data integral. I will not lose my data and nobody else will be able to see my confidential information. This is very important from cybersecurity perspective. But if things go beyond our control, then we need to talk about recovery and then we need to evolve. Means learn from our mistakes. This is where we totally lack. We keep having incidents, we keep having disasters, we respond, we recover, but we never learn. We never evolve from those. So a resilient organization always learns from its mistakes, documents what went wrong, how can we make it right, and make sure the same mistake never happens again. So the additional element which we added in business continuity, making it Resilience, we identified risk management, making sure we identify the right risks and prevent them, mitigate them. And once everything is done, we learn from them to enhance ourselves. We have a question. How can such data recovery and security be applicable for complex enterprises who have big data servers? Like, okay. So if you talk about big organizations, there are two kind of recoveries you can talk about from data perspective. One is in case of an operational incident where you might lose a database, I mean, you might lose certain transactions. Can be one specific system, can be an overall, you can say your entire data warehouse. In those kind of cases, these organizations invest in data centers having real time replication to so that the data can be restored and there are one way communications so that I so I would couple it with one way communication and one time writing uh, cap capability. The moment a data is written, it becomes readable only. Means no one can change the data, even if the data is infected or the system is infected, it will not be able to override or change any values or any uh, digits within your data. That's from the perspective of operational issues so that you can just go and recover and restore the data. But if you have a security incident, means a virus infection, a malware, then there is no turning back. You cannot just rely on your real-time replicated data because it's highly possible whatever was infecting your main environment has infected your backups, has infected your copies in your disaster recovery area, and has infected your alternate site as well. So what to do in those cases? Here we talk about putting cyber analytics in place. What does that mean? It means every single system you have in your organization, even if it's your application, your database, your networks, or typically your storage where data is just at rest. You keep applying certain analysis techniques and frameworks that make sure the data integrity is always there. It keeps checking the integral values of data. And if there is a slightest of change, one change in the signature, or one small change in your data calculation value, it means something has changed in the data which was not supposed to be changed. Then you assess it and you isolate it right away. That's the key. The more time you are going to invest in, I would say, mitigating these and enhancing your detective controls, better are you going to be chances that you will survive and you will be able to recover. If you do not make sure that your detection capabilities and your detection controls are not efficient, things will go undetected. By the time you identify the issue or you detect the problem, it will be too late for you. There have been incidents here, even in Saudi Arabia, I can say 
five years ago, there was a ministry which lost a data for more than two months. All they were left with, they restored. So the incident happened in March 2017. They were only able to recover data from January. So for the remaining two months, they had no way to recover the data other than asking for all their customers and all their supporting and organizations to provide data in hard copy. And they did complete data entry of the entire data again. Okay, we have a question. Do you think that OT or IT convergence with all benefits in the domain of automation will bring new security? Definitely. That's the whole point of this topic. OT is basically taking the direction of every single thing. You talk about OT and even the Internet of Things, the IoT. Every single thing is then going to be Internet based. Whatever I do, whatever my home, my home appliances, my office equipment, every single thing, it is going to be on Internet. Everything is interconnected. One loophole somewhere, some misconfiguration is going to impact every single thing in your ecosystem. If you talk about different organizations right now in the world, there who have already implemented these concepts in full capacity, they're already facing these issues. Unavailability of one system results in unavailability of the entire life of a person. You lose your data, you lose access to your systems, you lose access to your bank accounts, you lose access to your mobile, your laptops, every single thing. Sometimes people even lose access to some specific devices within their house because they're all controlled by same devices. So the emphasis on data security, network security, and then overall cyber security becomes way more important. So this is why this entire future is all about cyber resilience. But again, I want to take a step back. Cyber resilience is not just about cyber security. This is where we need to be very careful about. Yes, security is very important. Security is the a very main component, but that's not the only component. Keep this in mind. The future, when I say cyber resilience, I'm not saying cyber security resilience. So this was very intentional here. Cyber security resilience is yes, of course, but cyber resilience means the entire cyber world the entire world of the internet, the entire connected world, that's the cyber universe right now. The future which is coming, the metaverse, we are going to see drastic changes in this future, coming five years are going to be very, very, very different to what we have seen so far. Businesses are going to be done very differently. Tradings, seminars, exhibitions, they are going to be virtual through metaverse. All big brands in the world, they've already started developing their brands, their, you can say, products for Metaverse. Coca-Cola recently launched a specific t-shirt, which can only be purchased on the Metaverse. Balenciaga, a very famous brand for shoes, they have already launched their shop, their showroom on Metaverse, where you can go, your avatar can try the shoes, and make a payment there. You can purchase through cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is yet another aspect, which is part of your entire cyber universe. So this resilience when I'm talking about goes beyond just security, goes towards the entire cyber universe, which we are going to be part of very soon. So this life cycle, these steps, anticipate, prevent, prepare, respond, recover, and evolve. You can implement them anywhere, even if you are a totally non-technological environment. You are doing nothing from technology, but you can still be resilient by applying these concepts. Why all of this is critical for cybersecurity professionals? Why this is important for you? Because these bubbles, business continuity, emergency response, crisis management, human resource resilience, supply chain resilience, operational resilience, and then organization resilience. All of these, they are all going to be depending highly on technology and cyber universe. This is why cyber resilience becomes the heart 
of all of these aspects. We have already seen telemedicine. Telemedicine is just nothing but providing advices or maybe some kind of, uh, you can say, first aid or some kind of, uh, you can say, uh, advisory through voice over IP, telephones, virtual sessions. They took it one step ahead by using remote connections. The doctors and the surgeons were able to operate the patient through robots while the doctor was not in the operating room at all. So all these things, they were depending on availability of your systems, high efficiency of the environment where they are working, and precise performance. All of these are aspects of cyber resilience. Your supply chain, in typical corporate world today, you go, you create a purchase indent, you create purchase order, you receive goods, you issue good receive note, based on the goods received, you issue invoice and you make payments. All of these are very basic supply chain inventory management processes. They're all performed through ERPs. But things have gone way beyond this. The entire thing has become completely automated with no human involvement. Systems are able to identify what's the current inventory in my warehouse. They are able to, systems are automatically able to place the orders to the right vendors. They are able to receive the product, scan them, and store them through robots with no human in in like intervention in their warehouses. The moment the products are scanned and placed in the warehouse, systems automatically generate the invoice. Third parties make the payment, payments are received, and the entire cycle gets performed without getting noticed by a single person. What does all this mean? I'm relying very heavily on my systems. I'm relying very heavily on the integrity of my process, the availability of my process. So these systems, they have to be reliable, they have to be efficient, they have to be sufficient. Their capacity has to be sufficient to, so that they can be scalable and they can continue to provide me the right services I'm looking for. Now, specifically if I talk about cybersecurity, there's an internationally accepted standard from NIST, which is the NIST cybersecurity framework. It talks about five key elements or okay, five key phases, which kind of map with the overall resilience cycle, which we saw earlier. Protect yourself by all known threats. Detect whatever is wrong is happening in your environment. Respond to any anomaly. Recover from the issues in a timely manner. And make sure you keep performing this entire cycle. Identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. All these five elements, they make sure any environment is secure. They make sure any technology environment is cyber secure. Each of these elements have the, and their own complete, you can say, framework. All of them have their entire science behind them. They have their entire requirements, entire different tool sets and technologies which are being used. In a corporate world, if I talk about, let's say, a highly sophisticated organization, which is dealing with multitude of data and multiple different kind of services operating in large, uh, different, you could say, different region of the world, they have different teams only focused on identifying the issues and protecting, means dedicated cyber risk professionals. Keep detecting new threats, identifying new threats, assessing their impacts, and implement mitigating techniques. Then you have separate teams, dedicated SOCs for detection and respond. Even sometimes they divide the detect and respond into two separate teams. Detection is through SOC, respond is through cybersecurity incident response teams or emergency response teams. And then recovery is a totally different team from 
either disaster recovery or business continuity and crisis management perspective. The more you go deep down in these specific aspects, you will see all of them, they are an ocean of their own. So when we are, or I would say you are, studying in the university right now, you need to start learning from now. What are these different concepts? What are these different topics? What are these different areas which we need to focus on? When I'm going to join a big organization one day, what am I supposed to do? Am I going to be just a software developer? Am I going to be a software engineer? Am I going to be a database manager or database administrator only? Or I'm thinking to go beyond the technology components and talk about overall cybersecurity or overall cyber resilience and overall resilience because this is where the management wants to talk. This is what management wants to listen. This is what's being discussed in the management committees, in the boardrooms, in the senior management because the chief information officer, the chief information security officer, these two people are technology oriented people. These are the people you will eventually report to after 5-10 years. But what about the others? You have chief financial officer who is a chartered accountant or ACCA or an MBA. You are going to have chief operating officer who will be an amazing person in terms of if you are talking about an oil and gas industry, he will be a petroleum engineer. If you are talking about a construction business, he will be a civil engineer. You will have a marketing officer. You will have communication officer, legal officer. They don't understand technology at all. But all they care about is to safeguard the business, safeguard the reputation, and make their business up and running. Keep it running. This is all I care about. Don't tell me I'm going to lose money. Don't tell me I'm going to lose my partnership, my relationship, my reputation, or my customers. I cannot afford that. Do whatever it takes. Just make sure you do the right thing. So this is where you come into picture. You need to understand that whatever am I doing right now is the first step. Yes, you are learning software engineering or software programming, but this is not your final goal. You need to enhance this part to grow further where my one software is going to communicate with 10 different softwares in the organization. How can I make sure that my software is safe and secure to use, scalable and efficient and reliable? Then enhance your own capabilities to talk about different softwares together. Five different softwares, five built on five different technologies, having five different security requirements, but all communicating on the same communication channel, all hosted in maybe on the same middleware, all utilizing the same infrastructure. How they all communicate together? How can they communicate securely and safely? How they can compute efficiently? how they can all access the same data warehouse, but still communicate and work properly and efficiently and reliably. This is where you need to start thinking from today. Once you understand that, then go one step further. How am I making sure my business continues to be up and running? Because you understand the concepts of technology. Now you need to start grasping the concepts of the business itself and connect the dot between the business direction and the technology direction. The moment you do that, this is where you can then claim I'm somebody who is at least ready to talk how the management speaks. I'm able to be a manager. You can be an IT manager. You can be a cybersecurity manager. You can be a change manager. But change does not mean just software change. Change can be the entire organization level change. So all these concepts which I'm talking about, these are a universe of their own, I would say. And it takes a lot of time to understand and build them technically. I have a question. Okay. What will... So sometimes... If the, the culture you are operating or you're working in, let's talk about two different scenarios. The worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is going to be you are in a very political environment, which is like they, they don't treat the staff respectfully if you are not in power or you're a junior person. In those kind of environment, you need to communicate 
with the right i would say reasoning to your own boss your own manager if let's say you are the most junior person in the team right now at least communicate with the people who are above you up to two levels let's say you are a consultant there is a senior consultant above you and a manager above you talk to these two people and explain to them what you understand and what is your idea or what can go wrong or what needs to be done if you are an internee for example you are just trying to learn the basics of everything then you need to start talking to the people you are communicating with on a day to day basis and share your thoughts that yes i have learned some concepts i need to see how your organization is doing it and when they respond to you you can either contribute and give some input if you are an employee maybe second level and you are talking to your manager and the manager is not listening to you for example it does not mean that he is not listening to you it only means he does not want you to grow beyond him so he will always listen to you he will get all the information from you he will shut you down but he will then take the entire thing which you told him to the management and then show as if like he came up with the idea so you will from your perspective you lost everything but the management they gained the organization they became successful on the cost of your success that's the worst case scenario but even then the idea got conveyed sooner or later eventually you get what you deserve so when these kind of things happen don't be i would say don't feel down don't feel devastated yes you you will feel that it was my struggle my efforts i came up with the idea i came up with the solution i did everything it was all my efforts but somebody else got the praise it's fine the world is not i would say ideal not everybody gets what they deserve but eventually you get what you deserve so wait for it and be i would say patient sabar kare inshallah allah milta hai sab kuch but the worst the best case can be if you come up with the right idea the management would listen the manager would listen the senior would listen they will appreciate and they will take your topic or your idea or your initiative to the management okay can you give some instructions about how to polish your skills as a cyber security student okay see cyber security student if you are going to talk about technical security then we have tools to these days tools scripts we learn about python we learn about different languages through which you can write the scripts either to become a hacker or become a security professional who is preventing the hackers but that's one small i would say aspect of security technical part is good and this is the most you would say eye catching and fascinating that i am writing scripts i am using nmap i am using nessus i am using uh, some javascripts i'm i'm doing so many things and i am able to penetrate this data i am able to like hack the website see i restored i recovered like retrieved data from the database from that system you will feel so much you will achieve like achievements but uh, is this all no so as a student start with these areas okay what is this what is this? there was a question but it went away which team has scope in park red team or blue okay as a trainee application engineer working on ot i need quick career advice what skills i should work on to excel in ot cyber security in five next five years okay i'll answer both questions so red team or blue team i would say red team has more scope but that's my own uh, i would say advice uh, opinion people working in blue team can have different opinion of course but irrespective of red team blue team each of them is performing one aspect of cyber security all of these if you want to make sure your entire ecosystem is resilient 
and uh, everything is secure properly, then you need to make sure all of these teams, even if you are working in red team or blue team, or not part of anything, you are the team who is just writing policies and procedures. All of the efforts matter. So as an advice for the students in cybersecurity, do not limit yourself only to technical security. Like I need to learn the tools, I need to implement, I need to code. No, that's just one aspect to it. What the management see in the future, you need to learn management skills, which we call cybersecurity governance, or in broader terms, we call it GRC, governance, risk, and compliance. That's the hottest topic in the world right now. Cybersecurity GRC professionals are the most paid jobs most paid professionals but you cannot just become a cybersecurity grc professional today or by doing two certifications one eight hour course or one week course on linkedin or doing two or three certifications no of course not it takes time you need to learn the documentation you need to learn how to govern you need to identify learn the process of risk management you need to learn the compliance aspects from security all these areas then when they combine together, then you can say I am a cybersecurity GRC professional or a cybersecurity governance professional. From OT perspective, I would say if you are working as an OT engineer, you need to understand how automation is going to grow further. How I would say, okay, let's take it into two aspects because I am working in an organization right now which has two different kinds of OT environments. One is a fully automated OT environment, which nobody can even enter the entire environment. Fully automated, but fully isolated as well. What does this mean? It is totally secure from the threats coming from the internet, but it's totally vulnerable to people inside the environment. So if I have 100 people who are managing the ecosystem, they are not authorized to enter the place or the environment where my OT environment is being operated. But what if somebody goes there, inserts a USB device, and in infects a malware? The entire environment is going to be infected. And who will detect it? Sometimes nobody detects it because we overlook, since this environment is totally isolated from the internet, we don't even integrate the environment to our SOC environment. So the SOC team will be identifying all the threats coming from the internet, but they will never see anything from the inside at all. So as cybersecurity student, uh, student working on the OT environment, learn about preventing from internal threats, securing your ports, securing your physical security, physical access to all the systems which are connected to your OT environment. That's the most basic reason of different incidents which have happened so far. But if you are in an organization where OT is integrated with your IT environment, means people in your IT can access or can reach, if required, the OT environment, they can either ping it or there are multiple VLANs, but if a VLAN is compromised, they can access the OT or there are dashboards which are providing real-time data to the management, means data is being fetched from the OT environment, being sent to the data warehouse or the BI system, the business intelligence system. And from there, data is being published on the dashboard to the management. Means there are dots which are connecting your simple user, which has access to the internet, to your OT environment. This is where you need to ensure that the connecting points between the IT and OT environment, they are as secure as possible. Put as many safeguards as possible from preventive measures, apply access security lists, apply the segregation of duties concepts, make sure that you have the right controls in place, detect and see every single activity being performed in those connecting points to ensure that no unauthorized activity ever takes place. And the moment you identify it, you need to isolate and do a proper scan to make sure everything is fine. That's the only advice I can give, at least for somebody who is starting the OT career. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. There's too much to learn in red teaming. 
What is the best way to develop interest in the blue team like SOC and 